Welcome back. So maybe you don't feel the normal exceptions are enough for you. Maybe you want to build your own exceptions. I want to show you that this lesson. It's not that complex, luckily. Um, now, you know, why do we want to make our own exceptions? Well, maybe you kind of want to have a system where you've built a, a good explanation in each exception and you kind of make reuse of those exceptions. And I'm going to try and do that in my case by making an exception that says a parameter cannot be null exception. That means that every time I try and pass something into a method or a class, I can just fire that exception and then just explain what parameter was wrong just to make it easier and not having to rewrite that text again and again and again. So that's what I'm going to try and build this lesson. Now I cheat a little bit because I want to just do test driven development, right? I'm a test driven development developer, right? So I'm going to try and do that. Let's jump to the explorer. So I kind of prepared a new area down here in the test area. I added a new exceptions folder and I added something called parameter cannot be null exception test. This is the name of the new exception I want to build. And then of course you put test in the end to explain that's a test class. Now, why did I choose to put it inside the driver, uh, the primary driver adapters? Well, I decided to put it in there because I believe that it belongs to the core because whenever I want to kind of use the core, the location service test, uh, sorry, location service, I'll get an exception thrown and that exception belongs inside the core so I can throw it to whoever tries to use my code right here in the service. Of course, it'll end up being put up here. So the location service will start throwing a new exception right here. So we'll need to add a new directory, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to do it test driven. Okay, so let's try and jump into the code now and start making this test driven. Now I made two tests right here. The first one is new exception with no parameter returns parameter name plus cannot be null. Let's try and write this into human readable code. First of all, new exception of type null reference. I'm going to add that because I want to kind of make sure that this is going to be a null reference exception. So let's make null reference exception as the type right here. And let's just call it X for exception. And then we'll make a new uh, parameter cannot. Now notice if you guys forget it, you can just go and read the text up here because you made unit tests that are very easy to comprehend, right? So it's easy to see this should be the name of the class, the production class when I'm done, because that's the name of the test. There we go. And let's just put nothing in here right now because it says with no params and it should return some kind of parameter name cannot be null. Now, uh, I, I maybe I should put as text right here because just to be a message to be even more precise actually. Again, I try to make these as readable for you guys when you look at my code or any developer to make it easier for him to understand why I made this test and what it should actually return. <clears throat> now, first of all, I have a problem right here. I don't have this class. Let's go and create it into the Explorer. And again, as I said, this class needs to reside under exceptions in the adapters. So let's make that new directory. Now, this is, of course, just the design I chose to use, right? But I think I'm, I'm upholding the clean architecture. So that's why I chose it. I'll add a new class right here. And let's just put in the class for now and make it the name of the class without the test part. And there we go. Now we have our new class. I'll save this. Now when this is here, I can now import it. So let's go back to our code. We are test driven developers. So let's import this guy. <clears throat> there we go. Now he's available, but I still get an exception because he's not of the type null reference exception. Back to the code, back to my uh, exception right here. And actually now I need to extend that class. And there we go. Now we have the null reference exception extended and we're ready to continue. <clears throat> back to the test area and let's open this guy and let's jump into the exception. What do I want to test? Well, I want to do an assert that uh, I expect that this message, which is the one I'm going to build right now, unknown parameter cannot be null. Now I add unknown because this test is without me sending any any information from the outside. So when I just create this as a blank test, it's just going to put in the name unknown for my for now. So the parameter name will be will end up being here. For instance, if I'm passing it in a location, it'll say location parameter cannot be null if I'm passing in whatever I'm passing in, it's going to paste that into this text right here. And let's just that's going to be my message for now. So I'll do x dot message. So that's kind of the goal of my unit test right here that when I do this, it should actually feel like this. Okay, let's try and run the test and see if it works. Now, of course, the unit test fails because we're not passing in that parameter. So it returns no message. And it should actually return that message right here. Next step is of course, to go and do this in our test. And for now, let's just go back to the unit test. It's up here. 
parameter cannot be null unit test. And the way we do this is pretty much just that we pass it into our base of the constructor. So let's create a constructor, parameter cannot be null. We'll put in a, a colon like this and write base. And that's actually the parent constructor that we want to use. Of course, I need to put in parentheses first. I write base and then I pass in that message. Now the base or the constructor of the null reference will accept this message and then it can actually use that uh, to kind of show that message. Okay, let's try and run this again. Rerun all unit tests, see if that helped. That should be it. Now the first test passes and we're happy. But I'm not quite there because I don't, of course I don't want this to write unknown. I wanted to actually put in a message, right? Because if I make a parameter cannot be null and I kind of do it, let's try and look at the location service. In this case, when I do a create right here, I want to explain it's the location parameter that cannot be null. So I need to be able to pass in the name of the actual parameter that I want to kind of make sure it's not null. Okay, let's jump back to the code. Parameter cannot be null exception. It needs to get a message. I'm going to, instead of just putting it in there, I'm going to be test driven again. So I made a new, let's zoom out a little bit. I made a new method right here called a uh, new exception with parameters as parameter returns parameter name in the message. So let's just go and copy this for now, like this. And then I want to try to actually put in, for instance, location right here as a string. And then of course the end message should be location parameter cannot be null. Now we can make this a lot more complex, but right now it's just about test driven development and playing around with exceptions. So let's just make it as simple as possible. I'll put this into my notice right here. Parameter cannot be null doesn't have a constructor right now with a parameter in it. Let's go back and just add a string right here and let's call it um, parameter name like this. And now I just want to pass that into my string right here. So I'll just add this uh, dollar sign and then I can pass it in with curly brackets like this. And I'll just pass that in there, the parameter name. And then instead of unknown, I won't have that in here. And then I'll make a small trick because default, I'll do an equal right here and I say unknown. So now that means that if you don't pass in a parameter, it'll actually be unknown. Now, if I don't have that, let me just try and remove it. Notice what happens to my basic unit test. I'll just save that, go back to the code and go down to my test. And you'll notice now it won't work up here because it needs a parameter, right? Now I could pass in unknown, but why not instead just go and create the default inside my parameter right here is going to be equal to unknown like this. Um, so there we go. So let's try and run this now and see that both are actually running. I'll just add this and run it like, like this, run unit test. Now it popped up down here. They both seem to work, but actually, let's actually make sure that all are running and just go back to the entire class and say run unit test like this. Uh, sometimes I've experienced it doesn't run all the different methods out of the box. But there we go. Now we have our new unit test available.